Nobody knows what quarter munching is until you play this game. What's up everybody, my name's Don, and tonight we'll be playing Metal Slug. God help me. different weapon types in this game. The one I currently have right now is the heavy machine gun. It's the only weapon in the game where you can aim diagonally, but not really. It's really hard to explain how you shoot at 45 degree angle in this game. You just kind of have to aim up or down and then let the stick go neutral before you can actually shoot diagonally. It's really strange and awkward. And then again, you only do it with the submachine gun. It's strange. <laughs> strange mechanic game. <laughs> but it, it's an arcade game. It's supposed to be freaking impossible. And that's not to say that you can't beat this game without dying. You certainly can. But you need to you need to know the levels like the back of your hand. And whenever you grab 001, hold on to it. Because you will need those three extra hits. 001 being the tank number, by the way, if you didn't know. Super Vehicle 001 Metal Slug. So, so no, much to my disappointment, the guy's name is not Metal Slug, it's the tank. <laughs> so, the giant laser of doom and gloom here has three different attacks. For the first form, it will just rain down Hellfire at you, which you can just move left and right in order to avoid. It's pretty simple. Then for the second form, it will fire a big old laser which you can just duck under, and a spear bomb type of move which you can just hop over, even in the tank. So don't pass up an opportunity to get into the tank because, again, you get three extra hits and you have added firepower too, so that's something. I'll, I'll mention this now, but this game's soundtrack is, re is really epic, and I'll be sure to highlight, highlight that at the end of the video. <laughs> now, I don't know what I was doing here, but you can crawl under these, but I, I didn't think of it, so I just hopped over them for some reason. I, I don't know why. Alright, this is where shit gets real. Not only are there paratroopers coming from above to shoot down, you also got boats that are below you shooting up at you, so you gotta shoot down at those, which come further down the further down the road. You also got two new types of weapons. You got the rocket launcher, then you got the shotgun. Personally, I prefer the rocket launcher because it has range for these explosions, and also because it doesn't flash the whole damn screen. Like, Fuck's sake, can we not give the audience a seizure? Metal Slug and its sequels are the type of games where you have to repeatedly tap the fire button in order to get a rapid fire going. Unless you go into the options mode and turn on rapid fire mode anyway. Which is cheating, but I, I don't really judge. Actually, I do judge. Why, why would you turn rapid fire on? That ruins the challenge. That was a weird little rant, but before we go further with that, let's talk about the graphics and how this this guy right here is trying to futilely shovel water out of the sinking boat, but he knows it's fucked either way. So I don't know why he's still trying to why he, let go of the boat, man. <laughs> but you know, it's it's stuff like that that gives the game its charm. Oh god, the freaking shotgun! I hate this weapon. I mean, it's powerful, yes, but it's it's the flash that annoys me for some reason. It's obnoxious. So I've been giving this game praise, but there are still some glaring issues, like the really high difficulty. It is an arcade game, so expect to die. A lot. And you're gonna, you're gonna see me die. 
a lot. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I think it's the fact that you can't really maneuver like you want to. It's not like a Contra game where you can just flip all over the place. And, you know, Contra's not really that hard fighting on that. But, you know, there are some points in this game where you have to take the blood because you're backed into a corner. Like, I don't know what to tell you. There are some no-hit runs of, of this game on YouTube, but... You're not gonna see it from me, I mean, that's so that's what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so you're gonna need the slug for this. You got five planes trying to bomb you, and you also got soldiers trying to throw grenades at you. Okay. Grenades and a tank. You're in a tank with grenades. The Metal Gear references? Well, anywho. Alright, so boss 2 is a guy who looks like he who shall not be named. You know who I'm talking about. He's actually really simple. He'll start off by shooting missiles to the left. Just be on the right of that missile and you'll never be hit. Vice versa for when it shoots to the right, be on the left of that. And you'll never be hit by the missile going to the right. The second attack is some sort of wayfaring missile. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I can't explain what, why that missile went off screen, but whatever. Then he'll shoot missiles down at you from the helicopter bay door. Like, I don't know why he's trying to kill you himself. He's already got an arsenal of weapons on the helicopter himself, so why is he got a rocket launcher trying to shoot at you himself? Oh, that's just me, though. If I'm not overanalyzing the villain's motives, then I'm not happy. <laughs> That's why I like the Bond movies so much. Because the villains in those films are freaking stupid. <laughs> Mission complete. Perfectionist run ends here, so enjoy the death montage. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's not as failure tactic as uh, Metal Slug X. I felt so hard in that game. And we'll be seeing that soon, trust me. <laughs> poor Fiel. <laughs> just, just, poor Fiel. Speaking of Fia, she and Aria Ron is game. They're introduced in Metal Slug 2. Marco and Tama are your heroes for, are your heroes for this game. Marco being the blonde guy I'm playing as right now, and Tama being the red-headed guy with glasses. Sunglasses, rather. And there's no, like, character select either. It's either just the first player's Marco and the second player's Tama. So, make of that what you will. I will say that while the sequels got progressively better technically, they didn't really change the running gun formula, so the series got, the series got kind of stale as soon as the fourth game. Or probably even the third game. I honestly don't know why people like the third game that much. It's like, I mean, it's okay to like it, but it's not really too special, and the enemies are way too spongy. You can't tell me that the final boss was fair. Where, like, he takes a million hits, and... I don't know, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff going on where you just lose your bearings and get hit by a random bullet. Like, it's just... Yeah, I don't really like the third game all that much. But still better than 5 though, I don't like 5 all that much, it's too forgettable. Damn it, I hate this guy. His name is Alan O'Neill, which sounds like a Grand Theft Auto 5 character for some reason, I don't know why. But he's got a whole bunch of different attacks that can catch you off guard. First of all, he fires his machine gun really, really quickly, and you can most likely jump into that. If you get close to him, he'll turn into Slashy McSlice Fuck and just kill you instantly, so careful. But he is really easy to take down with uh, grenades, so make sure you have grenades on standby. Also, when you die, you do regain all your grenades back, so that's something. I do manage to kill him quickly though, 
any other time he would just stay just slightly beyond my uh, range of fire and just constantly kill me over and over again, so yeah, there's that. He does return in the sequels and he's just as annoying, so I'm not looking forward to that. The seizure tastic shotgun can clear the screen for enemies. This is the point of the game where, in order to progress, you have to destroy something on screen, whether it be a tank or some sort of gate. Problem is, there's usually like a whole bunch of enemies safeguarding it, and the screen the screen will get cluttered really quickly if you're not careful. So you have to shoot fast and shoot hard, and maneuver when you can too. Despite the clunky controls, you can still get away from some things. Oh, here's another uh, epilepsy warning here. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. I thought it was worse. And everybody dies, except for Marco, who I guess can survive buildings collapsing on top of him for some reason. I don't know, he may have deal with the devil. <laughs> to change subjects, it seems like this game and 2 and 3 has you gain to the no sled more often, but it's not like a crutch or game breaking or anything. If you're good enough, you can keep the tank for the whole stage, but 4, 5, and 6 seems to keep the tank away from you. Keep the tank away from you for some reason. You have to like go out of your way to get it, and it's rather strange how they implement the tanks into like the other vehicles in those games. Like say for example, it seems like in the later games they like to put the tanks on higher ground. The only problem is it's not really it's not really clear what you can jump on on those games, so you just end up jumping around like an idiot. And there's also enemies shooting at you from a thousand different directions, so I don't really find the tanks in the later games worth it, because A, you're probably going to get shot a lot and lose it before you get to the boss, and B, it's just too much of a hassle. Well, that was a rant I didn't expect. I mean, no, seriously, I, I, li I love these games, but some of them are just really boring and tedious. Oh, and I'm just some guy from Philadelphia, so I don't think my opinion matters on the internet. <laughs> Anywho, back to the boss who I just I just murdered in like 10 seconds. Holy crap, that was freaking bad. Well, I guess I can tell you about Tank Guy, who is currently burning up in there, Jesus Christ. He has a really quick laser. There is a tell on like when he's gonna shoot it, but it's really it's really quick, so you gotta be instantaneous on the movement. Which is easier said than done. Alright, stage 4, and... Oh wait, they do it in this game too? Okay, this is what I was talking about a couple of seconds ago. There's a metal slug on the second story for some ungodly reason, and since I blew up that barrel, I can't get up to the tank itself and use it against enemies. Huh, so maybe they did do it in this game. Huh, it's really weird. All these games are really the same. <laughs> As for this stage in a game, you gotta keep the enemies from filling up the screen too much, which is easier said than done. Remember that if you die, you lose your weapon power-ups, unless if you use a continue. If you use a continue, you just gain back your machine gun ammo. But if you die and you don't use continue, you go back to this dinkiest bug pistol. Now be careful of those tanks up above on the cliff. They will crush you if you're anywhere near them, which is the only instance of stage hazard I can think of in this game, besides bombless pits. Metal Slug was one of those games where you had to constantly practice in order to get anywhere in it, especially if you were playing it back in the arcade days where you had like three dollars worth of quarters and you had limited opportunities to fail. Let's just play it at that. So, but it's also weird playing it on a console too because you get unlimited lives if you select it. And yeah, there's really no way to fail if you have unlimited lives. It's really jarring. And, like, I don't know which I would rather do. Like, play it in the arcade with limited continues, or have unlimited continues and just bullshit my way through the game. 
And that's not to say that either style of playing the game is bad, it's just either you throw the bullshit or you take bullshit. You breeze through the game with un unlimited lives or you start at stage one over and over and over and over and over again. And I don't have time to start at stage one over and over and over again, so... Infinite lives, here I go. <laughs> So instead of one tank, we got two tanks to fight. Man, they're going after them. But no, this boss is really kind of hard. It's really easy to get caught up on the rope and clients and they just die. But if you have grenades, use them because you're going to need it. They do the most damage to the tanks unless you have a rocket launcher or a machine gun. But you can manage to destroy this thing eventually through trial and error and luck. Seriously, I almost got ran over by that funny thing. Mission complete. Stage 5. Now, I kid you not, I think they reused this exact same level design in Form 5 for one of their stages. It's, and it's really jarring. I'm telling you, these games, after a while, become much of the same. <laughs> Man, I don't think it's a homage sort of thing. I'm pretty sure they ran out of ideas as soon as game four. But what do I know? I don't design games. Well, I mean, I took a course in high school, but... I, I did really make good games. <laughs> Anywho, stage five is a straight-up shoot-em-up. Metal Slug, no! Ah, oh, there goes my opportunity to blow shit up. Uh, <laughs> uh. I'm not sure if I mentioned this weapon before. It was in stage one, but I didn't pick it up. It's the flamethrower, which burns enemies to a crisp, and it's really it's really useful for guys with shields. I died again. Damn it! We got big gate coming up but there's going to be soldiers guarding that gate, as well as a helicopter, as well as a big truck behind you too, so you got hustle. And there's the truck. Not much I can really do about that situation, just got pinned in the corner. So there's going to be another large ass gate ahead of you, but this time with a tank behind you. Just focus all your firepower on the, on the gate, and you should be fine. Alright, so final stretch of the stage, and this guy seems to like, get off! Thank you. Alright, you got like two more, two more waves of bikers trying to kamikaze into you, and I take this last one like a dumbass. Damn it, I lose the tank. Now this boss seems to be a staple in the Metal Slug games, as he appears in this game, 2, and I believe 5 and 6. Not quite sure on the latter two, but definitely the first two games he, this robot appears. Just like the first boss, he'll rain bullets down upon you, which are easy to dodge if you pay attention. And he's also got a flamethrower attack, which killed me. I guess I underestimated the hitbox. If this were literally any other game, I probably would have skated by by just touching the edge of the fire. But since this is Metal Slug, no, get no liberties. Not with fire, not with bullets. Final stage time! Alright, stage 6. Welcome to even more hell than what you were suffering from before. I don't have much in terms of strategy. I will say that SNK really wants your money and they will pry from you one way or another. This level is difficult. And hopefully you don't have weak thumbs because you will be blood mashing a lot. So what's everybody's thoughts on Metal Slug? Either the first game or the series as a whole? I like the first game and I do like the overall series, but there is a whole bunch of sameness within games. Like I mistake 4 and 5 of each other because they're just so run of the mill and there's no real astonishment with those games, I guess you can say. 
we'll definitely see those games further down the road in like 30 years. As long as YouTube doesn't self implode by then. <laughs> I seem to have really, really random luck whenever I record games, especially if it's a game I practice. Like, for example, Mega Man X2. I did that at the beginning of the year, and I don't normally get hit on Flamestack, but I almost died to him on the actual playthrough. And there was also a cock-up that I kept in the final recording. That cock up being that I prematurely jumped out of a mech and into a bombless pit trying to get a hard tank in Crystal Snail stage. <laughs> and I decide, you know what, let me just keep that in because it was funny. <laughs> Another example of me having bad luck in recording was when I did a Salt Suit Lanos for the channel. I kept dying at the final boss and it took me like almost an hour to beat him. So I had to cut out literally 40 to 50 minutes of failures just to get the get the correct attempt on screen. It was freaking annoying. I honestly don't recommend you look that up unless you're morbidly curious. But if you do want to, I'll just put a link in the description or put a card on this uh, at the end of the video. Or you can just look up my channel, the Assault Suit Lanos playthrough is still up in parts. I'm not really proud of that playthrough, honestly. Here's a pretty cool part of the stage. You can either grab onto this turret, which is actually more detrimental than it looks, or just use whatever you have at your disposal to shoot the helicopters and planes. Which is... Actually, now I come to think about it, it's pretty much the better option now. You got more jets and helicopters overhead, and you really want to be on the move whenever you're shooting them. It's really easy to die to these guys. No! Damn it, Marco, why can't you swim? I'm pretty sure Marines go through a swimming course or something. Why can't Marco swim here? But anywho, there's a nice graphical effect of the bridge collapsing whenever you shoot at it enough times. It's pretty neat for what this uh, technology can do back in the day. I did do research on the development team's history and found out a lot of interesting things, like how some of these guys were involved with the R-Type series, some others joined Squaresoft for a while. Like, it's very interesting what you'll find on Wikipedia. <laughs> The first real game they made together as a team was a game called Undercover Cops. It was basically a Streets of Rage Final Fight clone that came out in the arcades in 1992 and on the Super Famicom in 1995 or 6. I think it was 1995. It was pretty much a commercial failure. And now my video is going to get age restricted because that image on screen. Anywho, we're in the home stretch. We just gotta make it up this hill and do a pitiful job of not dying. And you also got pricks that drop mines too. Like, come on, dude, that's five year old shit. Alright, here we go. Final boss, the man who must show my name. You know who I'm talking about. He's got a simple pattern up until the last couple of hits, which is like a thousand. He fires these missiles, which are easy to dodge, granted if you pay attention. But he also shoots at you with his own personal rocket launcher. So Helly Hell Havoc Hero here is very bullet spongy. If you have weak thumbs, actually no seriously, how would you get here if you have weak thumbs unless you use rapid fire? 
Once he reaches pinch mode, he will rain down a whole bunch of missiles across the screen, and you have to shoot up in order to dodge him. If you don't, you will die. There's no real, there's no real way of getting around that move. And it's also kind of hard too if you have the pistol, because you have to keep tapping the button, and sometimes bolts are not even enough to get rid of the missiles. So there's going to be a whole bunch of trial and error and a sheer amount of luck to beat this guy, but when you do, it's really satisfying. And you can spam grenades too. You always get 10 back when you die. And yes, I guess it is a form of cheating, but since this game is as, it's as hard as it is, I guess it evens out. Damn it. I wonder if you can take out the missiles with the grenades. I have to try that next time. It has that you can't aim up with the grenades, but it has the arc where it goes slightly overhead, so maybe it might work there. There we go, that bastard. And despite the huge blood splatter, which is a lot more than what a human body can carry, he returns! Mission complete. After a job well done, you put your initials in the rankings, which doesn't really mean much in 2020 anymore, but definitely meant something back in the arcade games. And, okay, 10 continues, I just spent, theoretically I would have spent $2.50 if that were 10 continues. So I probably would have beaten this back in the day, through a lot of practice. But that was Metal Slug, a very, very aged but really good game. I recommend people play this. And I will be getting to Metal Slug 2, or more specifically X, within the next couple of weeks or two, so just keep an eye out for that. Anyway, my name is Don, and I hope you have a good day. See you later.